I've gotten a lot of comments on this channel of people saying something along the lines of, there is no way I'm going to Mexico for surgery and risking some hack job or possible death as if the facilities here are subpar or the doctors aren't properly trained. So in today's video, I'm going to give you some examples of what a realistic doctor's visit looks like in Mexico. I have some moles that I've been wanting to get removed for a while now. So today I have an appointment with a dermatologist and it's here at Hospital Moscati. This is the first time I've ever visited a dermatologist in my life, I think, not just in Mexico. <laughs> a common question I get is, how do you find doctors in Mexico? Well, I found this one um, by going on a Caretro Expats Facebook group and literally just searching for dermatologist and then see what others posted. Okay, so I just finished up with that appointment and she checked out various moles on my body and said that none of them were cancerous. But she also told me that she won't burn any off and that she'll only cut them off if I want them removed because she sends them all into the labs to make sure that uh, none are cancerous and all look good. So I have another appointment scheduled next week uh, to remove three of them on my face. And I thought today's appointment was going to be 800 pesos, but as it turns out, that is included in the price of getting the three of them removed. And so is like sending them to the lab to get them looked at and everything. Oh, and by the way, I didn't record any of this appointment because she didn't really seem comfortable with me recording. So I just kept the camera in my backpack. All right, it's about a week later and I'm back at the dermatologist's office and today I'm getting three moles removed. Uh, the main one I wanted gone was this one, but I figured while I'm here, I'll do like this one. And I think there's, I forget where the other one is, here or here, something like that. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna get that done today. Uh, I think it's gonna take about an hour and a half and then I'll give you an update when we're done. <laughs> All right, so far two down and one to go. Uh, it's been a very uh, quick and easy process so far, just uh, applying local anesthesia, cutting it out, stitching it up, and so far I've felt almost nothing. Now, now like this one over here, it kind of tickles a little bit, like a tiny stinging sensation, but it's, it's almost nothing. So it's gone by pretty quick, and now on to the third. All right, we're now done with the three. It, it went pretty smoothly uh, when she was applying the anesthesia to the last one. I did feel some pain there, but other than that, no pain at all, and I think it's kind of funny that this on my face look right now, it kind of just looks like my facial hair. <laughs> the stitches do, but she's gonna cover these up and then I'm gonna be good to go. All right, I'm back home now and I have to wear these bandages for 24 hours and then I can take those off and, oh, and by the way, um, to get these three moles removed, uh, without insurance, it was 5,000 pesos and that included the initial consultation, the removal, sending them to pathology and all that, the numbing of it, and the follow-up to remove the stitches. And I'll be going back in eight days to get these stitches removed. And then at that time, I'm going to get two moles on my back removed as well. Now I'm waiting for Alaska's physiotherapist to come over. So I was talking to someone and she's like, hey, I have a couple of friends here who are physical therapists for animals. And I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently will help her recover quicker. So I made an appointment for her today. I don't really know what's going to be involved in this or anything, but I'm interested to find out. So Ale was saying that Laska has less muscle in her leg after the surgery and we need to do some things to strengthen that muscle. So that I think there were five different exercises uh, that she's going to be doing in these sessions and I'm supposed to be doing it every day with Laska when Ali isn't here to help strengthen those muscles in Laska's back right leg. Aquí, cuidar que no abra la patita, que okay. la ponga sí. alineada. Ver, está haciendo eso. Sí, para no cargarle peso. And in addition to 20 minutes of exercise every session, right now, today, we're going to be doing an ultrasound and electrotherapy. So right now we're starting the ultrasound. And what's the ultrasound going to do for her? It reduces inflammation. Oh, la, la, Laska, <laughs> she has to lay down. So this is going to reduce inflammation? Reduce inflammation, help to recover the tissue, the damaged tissue. Okay. Um, uh, relax muscles. 
it doesn't hurt it lasts five minutes okay all right now we're doing some electrotherapy and this is for both pain and reducing inflammation so how long is this going to last? 12 minutes. 12 minutes? Okay. 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 Like this feels like tickles. Nazca, what do you think? <laughs> How long is your each session? Like 45 minutes. Okay. In total, with okay. exercise and, yeah. and these okay. things. Uh -huh. Alejandra just left and she said that after about two months of doing weekly sessions that that muscle in Laska's leg should be rebuilt in addition to me doing the exercises at home with her at least once a day. So uh, yeah, we have we're gonna do an extra session the first week and then after that, one session per week. So the cost for Laska's physical therapy would have been, I think, 330 pesos if I were to take Laska to her office. Um, but since I don't have a car, it's a little bit complicated to get Laska to and from. So therefore, I asked if she can come here and sure enough, that was an option. It's just a little bit more expensive. So it's going to be 550 pesos per session. Alejandra said the first session is always the hardest. So uh, hopefully we got the most difficult one out of the way. Aska, come here. We're, we're recording. I have to talk to you. You weren't very cooperative during that. You were bouncing around a lot. I think you thought you were a horse at one time, the way you were bucking. <laughs> What'd you think, Laska? Are you ready for more? So we're now here for Laska's second physical therapy session a few days later. And this time we're doing some other exercises. And also uh, she brought a laser this time. Uh, so what is this used for? This is used to accelerate the repair of the, of the tissues that are damaged during the surgery. Okay. I was actually with a different physical therapist yesterday and she told me, hey, I have this laser that I can use where you have stitches and it'll help it heal faster and heal with less scarring. Uh, do you want me to use that on you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And she showed me some results of previous patients who she had used it on and like it looks so much better after using the laser. And I couldn't believe the difference uh, from yesterday to today and what the scar and like these the area around the stitches looks like. It looks so much better today. <laughs> today is water delivery day, so I leave all my empty garrafones out by my front door. They come by, they pick it up, replace it with a new one, and I just have to leave the empties along with 43 pesos for each one. So I'm walking to breakfast this morning through the neighborhood of Santa Fe in Juriquilla. And in Santa Fe, they have the dumbest sidewalks. They're just like weaving the whole time, back and forth. It's, it's pretty annoying if you have two people walking, like one person walking, it's fine, you can walk straight. But two people, you're like, <laughs> But this is a nice neighborhood. They have a great dog park here. There's another really nice park over yonder that has like ducks and bridges and water and trees. Uh, yeah, I, I like hanging out here in Santa Fe. And they also have places to recycle, which isn't super common throughout Mexico. So that's kind of cool. It's pretty interesting here in Santa Fe and the surrounding neighborhoods, you hardly ever see police. However, Frequently, you see their private security force. They have private security that uh, patrols in these areas all the time. It's a very, very safe area. I've never seen anything bad happen, nor have I even heard of anything bad happening around here, knock on wood. But yeah, I just thought that whole private security thing uh, was interesting because I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else in Mexico where you just don't really see police, but you have your own private security force. Something else that's interesting about Santa Fe is the entire neighborhood, without exception, is made up of gated communities. There's literally no standalone homes that aren't inside a gated community. For breakfast this morning, I'm at this place called Brioche, 
and it's it has really good French food but they also have a lot of really great Mexican dishes as well if you saw a recent video where I went to Korean Grill this is actually in the same complex as Korean Grill is but I really like coming here it's tasty it's uh, not the cheapest but it's it's not super expensive either quiero un jugo verde por favor y también un té chai con leche de almendra Okay, gracias. Caliente, frío, oh, caliente, por favor. Quiero un jugo de canela, por favor. Ah, pero caliente y mantequilla al lado. Me acuerdo. Okay, gracias. Ah, quiero las enchiladas brioche, por favor. Okay. okay. I think I ordered way too much this morning. <laughs> I guess I'm really hungry. Uh, but I got a jugo verde, a green juice for 50 pesos, a chai latte for the same price, except I changed it for almond milk, which probably has an upcharge. And then I got a cinnamon roll for 45 pesos, and then an entree as well. So good. And by the way, whenever you're dining out in Mexico, if you don't ask for the check, they're not going to bring it to you. But you don't even have to know how to ask. You can just sign in there like this, and like that's a universal symbol here for knowing to bring you the check. Or you can say la cuenta, por favor. Ah, sí, de quince por ciento, por favor. Okay. Brioche Bakery is always super satisfying. But earlier I was thinking, you know, the, this place isn't uh, too pricey, but I think it's just that I'm used to the prices in Querétaro that I forget how much cheaper most of the rest of the country is because Querétaro is a fairly expensive city, but I can still come to a place like this and get a nice breakfast for way cheaper than what I would pay for a similar experience in Phoenix. And whenever I'm sharing prices, uh, remember that tax is included in that price. Like if you go out to eat in the US, you might have to add 30% to the menu price to account for tax and tip. But here, maybe you add uh, 10 or 15% because tax is already included, uh, but tip is not. And the expected tips are usually a little bit lower of a percentage here in Mexico than they are in the US. Before walking home, I wanted to make a quick stop in this health food store here. They have a bunch of options, including some harder to find products in Mexico. So this is a place I shop frequently to get things like hemp parts, nutritional yeast, certain vitamins, all sorts of other stuff. I especially love getting these things here for a healthy snack. They're taro chips and they have a bunch of different flavors. They're really good and they're only 29 pesos. Let's go. Let's go. I feel like when you see exercise equipment in a park in the US, there's never anybody using it. However, here in Mexico, you see them in a lot of parks and they're being used all the time. They're very popular. This is my first time seeing baby ducks here. The babies are so cute and I'm really close to them. I'm literally only four feet away from them. So I'm surprised there's not a mama duck chasing after me right now. Wow, I was just so close that I could have easily reached out with my hand and touched them. Crazy. So that's how they keep all these guys around. They feed them. <laughs> That'll do it. So that's one of the nice parks here in the neighborhood of Santa Fe. I refer to the other one, Talaska, as the dog park, and I refer to this one, Talaska, as the duck park. And she gets confused. I say, do you want to go to the duck park? And then she thinks I'm saying, do you want to go to the dog park? <laughs> By the way, if you're wanting to learn Spanish, my favorite course can be found at tangerinespanish.com. It's an excellent course and a great value. So if you want to check that out, head on over to tangerinespanish.com. That's my affiliate link and it will take you right there. Again, tangerinespanish.com. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing many more videos about life in Mexico. And a while back, I had to go to the emergency room several times and had different doctor's visits. So if you'd like to learn more about medical in Mexico, I'll link that video right here so you can watch that until I see you next Saturday.